Hi everybody and welcome back. So with the new iPhones you can now record in Apple Lock in the native camera app. But do you know how you can get the most out of your Apple Lock footage? Do you know how you set up DaVinci Correct so you get the best starting point and the most out of your footage? Let me show you. So the first thing you always want to do is go down to your project settings and make sure your color management is set up correctly. So you want to work to get the most out of it or have the most control of your, your pipeline in a non-color managed workflow. So you're going to choose DaVinci YRGB and we're going to work in DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate Color Space and we're going to output to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So the first note here is we're going to take the, the log footage and bring it into DaVinci White Gamut. Then we're going to do our primaries, primary color corrections in that log space and we're going to output to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And we're going to do that by going to effects and applying a color space transform. And the color space for Apple Log is Rec 2020. It's not Rec 709 and this, the gamma is Apple Log. And we're going to go to DaVinci White Gamma, DaVinci Intermediate. So now we're working in DaVinci Intermediate, but we want to see what the output's going to look like. So we're going to make a note at the end of our note tree here. And we're going to do a transformation from DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate to Rec. 709 and Gamma 2.4. So with these two nodes, if I select them and turn them on and off, we've normalized our image and we haven't done anything obviously, but we just normalized it and we are now looking at a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 output which is probably what your monitor is capable of showing. So let me turn the effects off. And this is where you would do your primaries. And I just set up in a basic workflow here of exposure, balancing and contrast, which is a pretty solid way of approaching any color correction. And with the basic primary corrections, you should probably be able to go to 80% of where you want your look to be. So. Let's first start off with, actually let's start off with the balancing and let's just cheat a little bit here. And if we pop up the scopes like so, you can see your waveform here that you have a little bias towards the red. And by the way, if you don't see the colors here, you have to go to settings and you have to select colorize option here. And once you do that, you get a very easy way to see any color bias you might have in your footage. So we can see we're a little high on the reds and greens. So that means we're a little bit yellow in the highlights and the lower midtone seems pretty balanced, but let's go to the white balance picker down here and select something we know should be white, like the column up here. And if we take a look at the scopes and also at the vector scope here, as I turn the node on and off, we can see we brought everything into a more truly white balanced image, which is always a good start. Then you can start tweaking it from there, but now you know you have a good foundation to work on. So if you go to the exposure node, oh, let me pop the scopes out, out again. So I might want to bring the shadows down a little bit. By the way, this is shot in, I think the five times zoom uh, camera. So I think that's not the the highest quality you can get out of the camera, but let's just tweak it a little bit. So let's play through here and see. Maybe we want to bring the midtones up a little bit. I'm not doing too much of a correction here, but on and off like so. I'm happy with the balance for now. And for the contrast, normally I would use the curves, but let's just go with the contrast slider for this for the sake of this tutorial and the pivot point would be set by default to 435, which I believe is the Rec. 709 pivot point. But since we're working in DaVinci White Gamut, we might want to ch uh, uh, change that to 336, which is the pivot point for DaVinci White Gamut. And then we can start maybe adding a little bit of contrast, not too much like so. Maybe want to go back and adjust the shadows. I'm using the lock wheels on my panels now. So 
like so and the contrast like so. So that's a pretty good starting point. So if I bypass everything, I'll go back to here and we can see we have a pretty solid foundation. And this is something you can transform to all of your, your clips. If you have several clips in the same location, it's very easy to copy paste this grade. And since we're not doing any, since we're only doing macro adjustments, this will transform pretty well to, to other clips. But let's say you have a lot of something you want to apply to this or a special look. So you can apply your own look so you can add some parallel notes here. And that just means you have the same RGB input to the same notes. So for example, if you want to push in a little um, warmth in the highlights, I can do so. I just label this highlights. I'm not going to do too much. Just add a little bit of warmth in the highlights. Like so. And let's say if you want to do something in the shadows, you can rename that. And let's say we want to push in a little bit of teal in the shadows. So we're not doing too much, but this is just to explain to you how secondaries would work here. Might be hard to see, but if we zoom in a little bit, you can see if we turn these two notes on and off. Just did a slight correction, log adjustment. If you have a lot, so let me just reset that. So if you have a LUT and you want to apply that, you have to make sure the LUT is applied in the correct color space. So I have created a few looks for myself and these are designed to work in Rec. 709. So it's important that they are applied after the Rec. 709 conversion. So I'm going to apply another one here. I'm going to call this LUT like so. And I have a few here. Uh, so I can choose from, this is pretty cool for this shot. So I'm going to apply that. And if you feel it's a bit heavy, you could go down to your keyer down here. And the gain, which is basically just an opacity slider, you could just bring the opacity of the lot down a little bit like so. So if I turn this, on and off. Let me just go full screen and turn that on and off. Oops, not the whole thing, just this LUT. There you go. So you see it's a bit heavy maybe still. So let's, let's go full screen here. Yeah, it's a little bit heavy. So maybe we want to go back and bring it down a little bit more like so. And maybe that's better. Definitely gives it a look. And if you play it through, everything looks nice. You won't see any crazy artifacts. So to recap, take your log footage into DaVinci White Gamut, bring it out to Rec. 709. Make sure that your lot is supplied in the right place in the stream or in your node tree. And do your primaries in between your 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 lock conversions in between your color space transforms and you'll have a pretty good outcome you can start to do to tweak every anything from there you can go after your lot you can apply grain or glow effects or sharpen your image or so but um, this is a pretty so pretty solid way of getting the most out of your apple lock i hope you enjoyed this i hope this helped you if you did please consider subscribing maybe giving us a like it really helps us and um, if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them and uh, catch you on the next one.